Hi, welcome to our continuing videos on how to use the Trotec rotary attachment. In today's video, we're going to take a look at how to use a mug with a handle. In this case, a powder coated mug. Now, the problem that we have typically with doing a handled mug like this is that unlike the, the wine glass that we saw in the previous video, where we could actually place the logo anywhere we want on the circumference of the actual glass. The problem with a mug with a handle is that we now have an area of that circle that we actually can't place our logo on. So now what we have to do is we have to be more precise when it comes to locating the position of our logos in relation to the mug itself. So this takes a little bit more thought when we're putting this together, but again, it's quite easy and really not that hard to do. So again, let's take a look at this. Uh, I'm gonna do one logo, I'm gonna do two logos. I'm gonna use both the job control method where we find the location with the red dot pointer. Um, and I'm also gonna set it up in Corel uh, where the circumference will be the page width uh, that I'm gonna use and I'll pinpoint location that way. So we'll show you both methods, uh, whichever one you feel uh, you're more comfortable with. Um, at least you'll have two in your repertoire to, to help you uh, do this type of a job for a customer. As I talked about before, um, one of the most important things that you can do um, is to try to make sure that you know what your customer wants and your customer's expectations of what they're going to get are beyond what you can deliver. Um, and the problem there um, is that if we don't do that, then we open ourselves up to, to having issues where we produce a product and the customer doesn't accept it. Um, and that's certainly applicable when it comes to doing products like this. There's a few questions you need to ask the question, uh, to the customer uh, to make sure that you understand exactly what they're doing because if you ask these, things go a lot quicker uh, and then the customer gets the product and they're not having any problems. And like I said in the previous uh, video, um, don't just do one logo, do two or do a logo and text on the other side. Um, you know, I had some customers in looking at a, uh, at a laser the other day um, and they had a couple of Yeti mugs. Um, I put the logo on the one side and, and put the, the text, uh, the name on the other side. So again, you know, it was nice that we got the logo on the one side, but it's even nicer when we got the text on the other side. And it doesn't take that much to, to, to put that um, second uh, logo on the other side. So certainly that's something that you wanted to offer to your customer. Now, when it comes to asking the questions, when it comes to a mug like this, the biggest question is, where do you want the logo? Do you want the logo on the outboard or the outside? or do you want it on the inboard? Remember that most people are right-handed, so when we talk about an inboard and an outboard, we're basing that, that, um, that on a right-handed person, okay? So when I'm holding the mug in my right hand, outboard, inboard, okay? So if the customer says, I wanna look at the logo, then that's inboard, because uh, we we're, we're assuming that they're right-handed. Um, if you wanna ask them if they're left-handed, then maybe that's something to point out to them. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you might be doing 40 of these and they're giving them away and you can't make that specification. So, you know, the, the thing is, ask where the logos are gonna go. You know, is it gonna go here? Is it gonna go here? I mean, it can go all the way around too, if you want. I mean, I could go from here all the way to here. And I've done that before, you know, people might have repeating uh, images all the way across, you know, and again, something like that can be done. That's not hard to do. Uh, and again, that's something to offer the customer because if we offer things that get them excited, then they'll be more prone to pay you more money to get it done, okay? So, you know, the question is, do I want one here? Do I want one here? Do I want two here? And once you sort of establish that with the customer, you know, when it comes to this, that's really all that, that, that we have to do. The only other 
um, question that you've got to do, which it doesn't really matter what product you're doing, is making sure you've got the proper artwork and if you're using uh, somebody's name, making sure the, the text is, uh, and the font are, are chosen properly. Now when we're using the job control software and the red dot pointer and the laser to do our location on the mug here, um, what I typically do is I normally just come in and uh, I make a, a, again a black X or a plus symbol uh, for the, the center location. Um, and again, uh, I like to use the center location. I guess theoretically you could use a uh, top location if you want to, but I normally like to do the center when it comes to, to, to locating on, uh, on this type of a mug here. Um, this is the, the art, again, just use the same artwork as we're using before. Um, and again, if we can place this on here, and you can sort of see exactly you know, where this is gonna go. Okay, and again, you can move this around, and this really um, is gonna be the middle. Now, I could tape this on here, um, and then I could just sort of locate to that, uh, or again, what I can do is, is just sort of say, okay, well, I'm gonna be somewhere around there, and, and then I'm gonna do the plus symbol. So again, not really scientific in terms of its locating, but um, I typically find that's, that's fine for what we need to do here. Um, and again, uh, you know, I can move it over if I want, but again, that allows me, you know, really to go from here, you know, and, and all the way around, and this is my center point right here, okay? So that's where I'm gonna bring my red dot pointer, and that's where I'm gonna snap a logo right to, right to that location. And again, we'll go through that uh, in the software setup. Again, on the other side, if I'm doing two-sided, same thing. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, take a look here, uh, and again, if I want to be exact, you know, I could measure out here. I could take my, my seamstress ruler here um, and I could uh, come out here with it. And, you know, I could come out and say, okay, just because I want it to be exact, uh, I can take that and, and basically that's uh, two inches. So I can come over here and then I can say, you know, go on here and then on here, just make this mark here for two inches. Okay, so I can come up here and then two inches. And, and, and again, like we talked about in, in, the, in the previous video, this line here isn't a big deal. What is the big deal is this line because when I spin the, when I set this one here, when I spin this, that's gonna be in line anyways. So this line here, so it's more of this here, but I, I put the, the, the cross here here just so it's easier to see. Uh, and again, if you, know, uh, if you want, you can measure this so that it's exactly in the middle. Uh, and again, we can sit here and we can measure this so it's exactly in the middle. So again, you know, if I wanna make sure that you know, I'm exactly right in the middle, um, I can take that, so that's three and a half, so basically one and three quarters. So you know, we're somewhere right around, sorry, uh, we're three and a half inches here. So I'm basically inch and three quarters. So I'm just in around there. So that's my there and so I want to be there. So again, that, that makes it relatively easy, fairly straightforward. I have my two home positions on here, my lo locating positions. So again, that makes it quite easy for me to, to be able to now bring the red dot pointer uh, and then I'll be able to set a, a marker there and I'll be able to snap my artwork directly right to that and then uh, again I'll save it for a template and, and then off I go. So before I actually uh, put the mug in here and, and, get, and start engraving, I've got to make sure that the uh, mug itself, the handle on the mug, will clear the base of the actual rotary attachment. Um, you can see that this cone here and this cone here, they both have adjustments. So again, I can loosen this up and I can bring this cone up and I can do the same thing on this side. And, and we need to do that because if I turn and the mug hits the base here, then I need to raise it up. So I need to just make sure that I'm going to have the clearance so that I don't go start engraving and then the, the, the mug comes around and hits the base and, and then ruins my, my, my mug. So again, if I pop this in here and tighten that up.
And again, I am in suspend mode, so that allows my motors are unlocked right now. They still have power, but the motors are unlocked, which allows me to move this around and also allows me to spin here without any impedance from the actual motor itself. And now I can come around and I can make sure that, and this is the way the mug is, would normally turn. So I can come all the way around and you can see I've got my clearance. Okay, so I'm not going to hit anything. So the only thing I really have to worry about is making sure that now I don't hit the head as it comes across because remember that will be a lot closer uh, for the focus when I'm in focus. So again, I've got to make sure that I start here uh, and then the mug's going to progress to the back. Just uh, one thing uh, that I didn't mention in the previous vi um, videos is just on uh, focusing. Um, normally what I'm doing when I'm focusing um, is, again, we normally manually focus. So normally what we're doing, as most of you know, is that brass nut will go on the ledge here and on, or on this ledge, you can go either side. Um, and again, on that ledge, I can slide this back and forth. And the problem is, is that we want to be right on the middle like right at the top of, of the mug, which because this is turning, that's going to be our focus spot. So what I want to do is if that's the red dot pointer, I want to touch this piece right here. I don't want it to be here because even though it's really not that big of a deal, it is really out a little bit. So I want to be right on here. So what I normally do is I'll set this right here. And again, I can slide this back and forth. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go in with my phone here uh, on the video there and again you can see that I'm set right here and again I can slide that back and forth there's a there's a nut right there that's going to go on the on the ledge here and I can move this back and forth and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up And what I want is I want that head to be in line with the red dot pointer. So you can see that the leg is going to basically be in line with the red dot pointer. So again, if I bring it up and basically it's going to fall off and now I'm in focus. Now the beauty about that too is, is, is that if you look up on the screen here, you'll notice that I have a Z value right here. And the nice thing about that 5.54 is the next time I go to do the mug, now what I can do is I can actually move this, if I'm out of focus again, now what I can do is I can actually bring this down to 5. Point there, and now I'm back in focus. So I haven't even used the focus tool, I've just done, used the Z value here. So again, normally what I'll do um, is I'll actually, uh, I'll save that 5.54 in the template file so that I know the next time I go to do this mug that that I just need to bring the, the head up till 5.54 so I don't have to worry about doing the manual focus with the, with the focus tool. Okay, so the only other thing I need to do here is I'm gonna get this uh, spun back to the top so I'm going to bring this back up to the top and let's remove this logo here and put this back in. Now remember when you put this in, normally again, I try to, again, this is as far as you can go, right? Because remember that the, the I don't, this is going to be turning back this way, right? So that the mug's going to be going like this. And again, that's as far as I can go. So I don't want to hit the head. So I'm off the head a little bit. And you can see what I'm going to line up with is that dash that I made there. Okay. So that's really the starting point. Um, I'm actually going to, I have to set up the, uh, the, the, the head here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this uh, mug until I get to here. And then I'm going to snap my logo to there. But normally what I'm going to do is, is this is probably going to be um, the, uh, this is how I could line up right here if I wanted to. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to turn this. I'm not going to turn the mug manually. I'm going to actually turn it with the, with the focus tool. 
or with the uh, sorry I'm going to turn this with the with with the keypad here and I'm going to go to the back so I'm hitting the down arrow which again is like going down the page and again I'm going to bring this till I'm in line with my pointer okay so there's my middle point right there okay and again if we look on the screen there basically that's the setup there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into options accessories loader attachment my diameter is three inches I want to return to the start position because I'm going to use a red dot pointer as my lineup I'm going to say OK and then basically there's your 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 uh, head right there so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my artwork and I'm going to bring it out and it turns and we're good to go and I'm going to snap my artwork there and normally what I do is I put an F8 there so again I've got my little marker there that I can save and basically now I'm going to snap it right up because <coughs> normally what I do is is if I bring this back to the beginning the question is what am I going to do on the next mug am I going to line it up on here or, or do I want to line it up here because remember I don't have I'm not going to have this on the second mug I could put it on but again you know you don't want to maybe get into the habit of putting this on when you don't really need the transfer mask being on so I need a little bit of a faster way of just you know taking this out putting it in and doing the next one right so normally what I do is I normally I, I can touch the back you can feel I can see this is hitting the back here so I normally back off a little bit and I know that's my starting point because every mug has to go in the same position because I want it to turn the same distance to be able to put the logo in the same spot and just remember that because this handle is going back I don't want the handle out here is going to hit this right I want the handle behind the actual head and normally I touch the head and I come off just a little bit and then I know I'm in line with if you remember with that line I put right there okay so now what happens is this is going to turn well the metal point is here this is going to turn a little bit and start doing the logo probably about here and then going down along here and then if I have another logo then it's going to go on to the other side okay so now if I want to do the logo on the other side it's quite easy because now I'm going to keep turning down and again you can see I've got my clearance right and then what I want to do is I want to come to the next plus symbol that I put in there and again uh, what I can do here is I can just take this logo let's say I'm going to just do the same logo I can just duplicate this logo and then if I want I can grab that and bring it over here let's zoom back in here and again what I would suggest you do again is put an F8 uh, marker here and we can snap there to to that marker and now that logo is in line with here okay and now I'll, now all I need to do is I, I need to take this off and now I've got my template set up and then what I would probably do is I would come in here and save this save as just call it uh, you know a handled mug powder coated mug or however you want to put it in there say save and then basically now I've got my template saved and I'm ready to go okay so all I need to do now is just going to run the machine I'm going to say all jobs not just the selected jobs so what's going to happen now is that mug is going to turn back to the starting position and it's going to start doing the logo Okay, it didn't go all the way back to the starting position because basically uh, it's just going to start the logo. Now that's not normally where I would start it. 
um, and I'll, when I do that, I'll bring a, I'll show you the, um, that normally what I would do is I would normally have it because I'm returning to the start position. And I want to line up with the start position. I would normally bring it up to the to the uh, top. So you can see it turning around and it's doing the next logo. And you can see on the screen that it's progressed from the first logo and now it's down on the second logo and it's processing that logo. And just for those people that are wondering, this is at speed. I'm not uh, fast speeding this up. I could probably go a little bit faster, but this is a powder coated mug. I'm not totally used to, I just bought these off Amazon. So um, I didn't want to play around with getting the power and speed right, but this is pretty similar to what your speed would be even if I got to a max. So the job's basically almost done. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna stop here. Now normally what I want to do is I want to rotate back to the beginning, but because I wanted to show you the turn of the mug, then basically um, it's going it to stop there. So really all I have to do now is basically turn it back. And I come back to the beginning. And again, that's where I'm going to start there. Typically I'm gonna, I want to start there and then run it from there. Okay. So basically that's, that's how it is. Uh, for for doing the two-sided mug with this type of position because what I want to do is the next time I put a mug in I want to just put the mug in like this put this back here like so tighten it up a little bit and then I want to hold this and I want to turn this back touch the the, um, the back of the head so I use that as my as my marker point and then I'm going to turn back off a little bit and that's my starting point Okay, because I need to be able to put that, very, very important, I need to put that mug in the same spot every time. Okay, that's very, very important that that always goes in the same spot, because if it doesn't, then the logos aren't going to be in the right spot. So you always need some sort of a reference point when you're putting it back in, because ultimately now, I don't want to put the, the white masking on every, on every, on every, um, every, on two sides of this job and make these marks and measure it out that's just takes too much time so if I use this as my locating spot the next time I put one in it's going to be bang on the same spot uh, the one on the back side is going to be bang on the same spot and off I go Now that we've used the job control software and the red dot pointer to help locate uh, the logos on our mug, um, I'm going to use the second technique that uh, I uh, showed you uh, when we did the wine glass. And basically what I'm going to do there is I'm going to lay out a page width. Uh, the page width. The page width will indicate the circumference of the actual mug. Um, and then I'm going to locate the two logos on that page width to reflect where I want them to go on the actual mug itself. Now the problem that we have with the mug versus the wine glass is that we have to account for the handle um, on the mug. So 
Um, this mug is three and a half inches uh, in diameter, so uh, basically, you know, the full circumference is, is 11 inches. Um, the, the problem with the handle is that I can't use the full 11 because if this comes around, um, it's going to hit uh, the laser uh, head. Plus, you know, we can't etch anything on here because the handle's in the way. Um, so ultimately, I need to remove that from my from from you know from when I figure out the page width. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure the circumference and that circumference is going to be basically based on this area here so from here all the way to here now I've shown I, I printed everything out on a piece of paper here just to make it look easier uh, for you to sort of see exactly what I'm doing and this helps out even if you you know, even if you, you're not familiar with the technique or even if you're familiar with the technique, sometimes doing something like this gives you a little bit better um, idea of, of where everything is going to locate. Uh, and sometimes it can help you out if there's any issues in terms of, um, you know, your, your, your measurements or anything like that so that you don't go to engrave the mug and, and everything's off or whatever. Okay, so um, that's, that's why I put this on here. That gives you a visual cue as to what we're doing here. Um, and it also allows me to see exactly exactly you know that these logos are in line with where I want them okay so I need to take a couple of measurements here um, and the thing to remember when you use this technique um, is you need to be relatively precise in, in, in your measurements okay uh, because if you're not things are going to get out you know when I use the red dot pointer uh, to figure out a location it's easy um, you know, I just bring it out, I locate, I drop my logo there, and, and off I go. Now, when I lay everything out on a piece of paper, uh, and then I send it over to the laser machine, um, everything has to be a little bit more precise. So we need to spend a bit more time figuring things out. Um, but again, if you need the actual location, um, then this is the way you need to do it. Okay, so I'm going to take my ruler. That seems this really here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to measure the, the working circumference that we want to work with. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place, you know, my, my seamstress ruler, my tape measure here on, on my mug. Okay. And then I'm going to basically go all the way around to the other side. And then I'm going to get that measurement. So let's get this started here and then all the way around and you'll notice that it's nine and a, nine and a half inches. Okay, so that's basically my circumference. Um, the next thing I need to figure out is, you know, I could figure out whatever the height is right here, um, you know, so I can measure from, you know, from here to here and say, okay, well, you know, my logos, you know, basically needs to be at two and a half inches or two, an in two inches or wherever it needs to be. Um, the, uh, the next uh, measurement I need to take is I need to make sure that I get my circumference right. Okay, if you're off a little bit, uh, you know, on a wine glass or something like that, it's not a big deal. But when we're doing precise location, we need to make sure that it's done that way. Okay, so I'm going to measure this out. And again, what you want to do on here is you make sure you work from the outside, not the inside of the lip, but the outside of the lip, and you notice that it's three and a half inches. Okay, and that's basically what I want. Okay, the last measurement that I need to do is how far do I need the logo to go from here over to here? Okay, and, and that's critical because um, what you have to understand, and I'll show you on the laser uh, when we go over there, is I need a fixed location where I'm starting every time I put another mug in there. I have to start in the same location. That's why it's kind of nice to have this paper here uh, because you can, I, you know, at the edge of the paper is my, where my red dot pointer is going to be, and that's where I'm going to start from. Okay, so I need to measure from here over to my middle point, which in this case is Let's get it set up here, and let's, whoop, let's get it set up here. I'm going to measure this over, and you notice that it's two inches. Okay, so from here to here is two inches. Okay, so now I have my measurements. Uh, so now I can take those measurements and I can transpose them into the page uh, setup in CorelDRAW and then send the job over to the laser machine. 
So I've got CorelDRAW uh, opened up here, and as you can see on the screen, I've sort of done a facsimile of, of what we're dealing with here on the physical mug. So the blue line here is the act of working circumference, and the black area here is really reflecting the, the handle. And again, um, you know, it could be one inch, could be two inches, could be inch and a half. It just, you know, it really depends on how close we want to get, we can get to the handle itself. Okay, so again, just putting this up on the screen so that, you know, if again, if you have any doubts or, or you're still not totally sure exactly what I'm talking about, this is really um, a visual representation of what we're doing. So my logo can go all the way around. So this area here um, is going to be one logo and this area over here is going to be another logo. You know, again, this is sort of relatively blank area down here, but that could easily be a logo too. Okay, so again, um, that's certainly something that uh, um, is maybe make it easier for some people to understand exactly what's going on. Now I've gone back here. There's, here's my setup. Uh, remember, my page size um, is nine and a half uh, inches, um, and that's my working area here. But um, you can see that uh, what I've done here. Let's just get these out of the way. Um, is I made a page size that's 11 inches by 2. So 11 inches being the full um, circumference of the actual uh, mug itself. And th this is very important that this has to be done. Okay, don't put 9.5 in. Uh, that's the working circumference. Uh, what we're worried about is the, um, is, the, is the overall circumference when we're setting the page size up. I'll set up a, a smaller uh, box size here for the 9.5 but it's 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 important to understand um, that uh, that we need to do this so what i want to do here is i want to take my first logo um, and remember this is the top of the glass here on this side right here this is the bottom theoretically the glass because remember uh, this if i take this page and i make it into a circle if i was to print this out and join it together that full page would be the full circumference of the actual mug Okay, so this, if we measured it, this had to be two inches away from this edge here. So that's relatively easy to do in Corel Draw. All I really need to do here is I've set my center point here, my center origin here, um, and my page is 11 inches, so uh, this has to go to 9 inches. And I have set a uh, ruler here for me. So all I need to do is set the X for 9, because I'm working off the middle of the logo. And then basically it goes there, and it's at 1 inch. So I can take this and put this at one inch, and then my, my logo's there. Now, my second logo um, is going to be basically five and a half inches um, this way uh, because I'm two inches away from here. So two and two is four, and then five and a half is nine and a half. That reflects my, my, um, my page size. So all I really need to do now is take this, and then this has to go at three and a half. And this has to go back to one, two. So again, now my logos are, are positioned properly. Now, if I put a page width in here, nine and a half, just so that you can see exactly what's going on here, let's make a box here. Um, and I'm going to make that 9.5. And let's just set this at the corner here, which is going to be 11. So now we're right on the edge. And let me just uh, make this a different color and a little bit thicker so you can understand what is going on here. So this area here in the red, that's the circumference of the measured area that I measured before, which is nine and a half inches. Okay. This area here, down here, reflects the handled area, which is kind of an out of bounds area. So that area, we do have to account for it in the, in the page setup, but we don't necessarily need to account for it um, in the, um, in, in the, in, when we're setting the, the artwork up. So this is here just as a fill-in. Uh, I mean, theoretically, you, you could, um, you know, you, you could uh, put this in here if you want, but I like to sort of include this because then it fills up the full page. Okay, so that's basically our setup. Now we've got our our our, um, our two logos set up. They're in the positions that I need them to be in. Okay, um, I don't really need the red box here, so I'm going to get rid of it. And really, all I need to do now is just print that. So I'm going to go File Print. I'm going to go to Preferences. 
you can see I've already put the three and a half inches in here. I've got the rotary attachment uh, activated and I've got a two inch, uh, two inch height. And I've got all my basic settings here. Uh, put that order dithering and then I can hit the uh, accept button and then the print. Go to job control and here's the job here. I'm going to bring it out. Make sure that this is in the middle. You can see that basically I've got a guide the line put here at the two inches and everything lines up properly. Uh, and again, if you want to test that, we can put the hip mug in and let's take a look at it. So there we go. So I take my mug. There's my mug here. I'm going to place that in here. I'm going to just it in here make sure we're set properly I want the handle to come back and touch the the, the the back of the laser source here okay and then just lock that in now again if you want to test it uh, we can do that we can bring this over to the middle as to where we want it to, to locate and then I'm going to bring this down here like so and you can see I'm bang right on in terms of my location and then if I turn all the way around here I should be pretty close for that location too which I am okay so again we're all set there too for my location so again now I can basically run the job so I'll bring this back to the start position. I'm pressing the this key here. And just remember that uh, in our setup, we want to make sure that we have the um, our setup is is basically uh, going back to the start position. Okay. So in the settings here under options. Under, under accessories, rotary, we want to return to the start position. Okay, and we want to do that um, because when I put the next one in, I just want to be, be able to, you know, take this finished one out, put, a, put the next one in, like so, and up a little bit, and then all I need to do then is hit the repeat key here. Okay, I'm just going to spin this back here like so. And then I press the repeat, beat, re repeat button here if I was doing the same logo, and everything's ready to go. Okay, so all I really need to do, let's get rid of this here. This is need to be on here. And then all I need to do now is basically just run the job. And you can see on the screen, the uh, basically the information is being sent over to laser, and it's giving me basically it's you know parsing the rest of the information over there. Now I'll spin over around. You can see I get the clearance in the bottom and then the next logo starts engraving. And when I'm done, the bug will come all the way back to the starting position.
Job's done. And the mug turns back. And again, it's going back to the original position. So basically now I just need to put the next mug in and then off I go. Very straightforward, very easy. Sometimes the problem with these powdered mugs is that they tend to be a little bit discolored once you etch it. Uh, normally what we use is we use the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. Um, and that basically just, I wet it down um, and, and then basically I just rub on here. And, and that'll sort of give you a relatively uh, clean etching uh, that becomes um, a little bit more silver. Uh, certainly the better quality powdered mugs will be certainly more silver in the background. Um, but this one's pretty good. Just give it a nice uh, etch here. And then when you're done, just wipe it off and we're nice and cleaned up. So again, you know, certainly um, using this helps out with the finished product. Well, there's how to do a uh, two-sided mug. I've used two techniques as I did with the wine glass uh, to get our images on the mug. Um, whether you use the job control method where I'm locating with the red dot pointer or where you lay it out on a page in Corel, basically up to you. Um, my personal choice a lot of times is just using the job control. I line up with the red dot pointer. Normally it's, it's, uh, it's, it's easy, it's quick. I tend to find it uh, works really well. Um, but again, if you want to use the other system, that's up to you. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you like the video, click on the, the like link at the bottom. Um, and if you're interested, subscribe. I'll be doing more videos. The next one's going to be on a Yeti mug. Hopefully I'll have that done up uh, uh, quickly. Uh, and if you like the channel, subscribe to it. Uh, and if you have any comments, uh, leave them in the bottom there. Anyways, have a good day. Happy lasering.